Aloe grows in hot, dry climates, which is the opposite of my climate. In the summer, my climate is warm and wet. And even though we had reached temperatures in the upper 80s and even 90 degrees, we rarely see 100 or more. We also can depend on getting a good amount of rainfall during the growing season. Aloe is considered a cooling plant, which makes sense because if you're in the desert, you want something that can cool you. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne, traditional naturopath. I, I love sharing natural remedies with people for better health. Natural remedies have been around for hundreds, even thousands of years, like this plant that we're discussing. Natural remedies have stayed with us because they work and they work on humans, also animals. Aloe use dates back to Egyptian times. The first authentic record of aloe as a plant with healing properties is accredited to a Mesopotamian clay tablet dated at circa 2100 BCE. However, the first detailed depiction of the plant's medicinal value is found in the Papyrus Ebers, an Egyptian document dated at circa 1550 BCE, which sets out multiple aloe containing medicinal preparations for the described or uh, of external and internal concerns. The aloe vera plant is described in detail in the Greek herbal Dioscorides, circa 70 AD. And it's used, prom promoted for the treatment of wounds, hair loss, genital ulcers, and hemorrhoids. So thank you for joining me today. I hope that you like this video and give me a thumbs up. Share it with others and comment below. I love hearing from you. If you subscribe and click on the little bell, you'll be notified each week when I do these presentations. If you've been watching my Health to Home and Preppy Herbalist classes, you will notice that all of 2021, we've been focusing on a single herb as far as its culinary uses and its medicinal value. So food is our medicine and what we eat on a daily basis can either contribute to health or contribute to illness. Aloe isn't something one would think of in culinary context. There are some in the hot, dry climates that use it as a food, but adding a bit of aloe is very hydrating. And that's why these hot, dry climates use it. They've noticed that when they use aloe, they feel better. So adding a bit of aloe to your water will help you stay hydrated for longer and actually gets that water into the cells. Now it's the green part of the leaf, this outer part here that can be a laxative. So what most people do is they cut the tip off and then slide a knife along the edge here and along the edge here to cut off the prickers and then fillet it and then take out the gel and use only the gel. But there are wonderful healing properties in all of the plant as far as you see, except for these thorny things, you don't need those. Um, <clears throat> let me see if I can get my slide to move here. So <clears throat> there's a wonderful recipe that I'll link to, but it's very simple. You simply, like I said, flay this open and get the gel out and add uh, two cups of water to a blender and a tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice and a tablespoon of the gel that you get from the inner leaf. And you blend it with ice and pour it into glasses and add mint as a garnish. And this is very, very refreshing when you're 
hot, you've been out working, you sweat it out a lot, and you need to rehydrate. And this slushy can do that for you. There are over 400 varieties of aloe and some not suitable to be eaten. <clears throat> so start slow in adding it to your drink. Some people react more than others, but generally speaking, if you don't use the green part, you're gonna be okay um, as far as it not creating a laxative effect. If however, you want the laxative effect, add a little bit of the green. And actually whole food does sell aloe vera leaf. Um, and I'm sure there are other places that you can get it. It is uh, readily available in places like um, Texas or um, closer to the Mexican border. And also, <clears throat> in hot, dry climates like in Oregon where there's a desert. So this is what we call smoothage. <laughs> so you've heard of roughage. Well, this is smoothage. And your body actually needs both kinds of fiber. And I'm going to be doing a class on Saturday that talks about smoothage versus roughage and why you need both. So I hope you check out my YouTube channel for the recording of that particular class. I think you find it very interesting. These once a month classes are about an hour long. So they're not like the health to home preppy herbalist classes, which this is one of, and I tend to keep those within 20 minutes to, um, less than a half hour. So the first case report of the beneficial effects of aloe vera in the treatment of skin and wound healing was published in 1935. Now I told you about the ancient recordings, but these are the modern recordings of the healing benefits of whole leaf extract and how valuable they are as far as first and second degree burns and how healing it can be, but it can also be very healing for the effects of psoriasis where the skin doesn't heal. So in psoriasis, you get these dry, ugly patches of skin, but the new skin, raises to the surface so quickly that it doesn't have time to mature. And aloe can be very beneficial in this. It's also been found very beneficial in um, the itching and burning associated with severe radiation dermatitis. So people who have uh, radiation treatment and have been burned have found some very soothing uh, effects with using just aloe vera gel. And in 1935, they documented this. Now there are numerous subsequent reports have explored the role of topical aloe vera administration in skin conditions and wound healing management, um, including the psoriasis, dermatitis, oral mucositis, um, burn injuries and uh, surgical wounds. So I will link that study um, where I got this information in the description below so that you can uh, see for yourself and read all of the report. It's very good at inhibiting the growth of bacteria. It's best to use pure aloe vera gel obtained directly from an aloe vera plant or from a company that you trust. Um, I also like to mix it with some lavender, which is a great um, essential oil for tissue healing and especially for burns. So, um, and I'll show you the aloe that I use in, um, in just a minute. Since we have tissue on the inside of our body, it is helpful for us to, um, for this type of irritated tissue as well. 
people who have ulcers or other inflammatory tissue might benefit by adding some aloe to their diet. And as I mentioned, you could do the smoothie, you can add it to your water, uh, but it does help to calm the um, whole digestive system. If one has hemorrhoids, it may be due to the fact that your stools are hard to pass. And so maybe having that little bit of laxative effect would be beneficial um, to both helping the colon be healthier as well as the digestive process. So you can uh, also apply the, the gel topically for soothing the hemorrhoids. Apply a small amount to a square of tissue after you do your final wipe and uh, apply the aloe gel. And again, I would add lavender to that um, as well to help it heal. It is very uh, absorbing, so it doesn't lay on the skin. If you needed uh, something that was like an ointment, I would still add the aloe gel to uh, an ointment. Uh, and it's very soothing for diaper rash, any of these rashes that would um, occur. So the first case uh, report of the benefit uh, beneficial effects of aloe vera in the treatment of skin and wound healing was published in 1935 with fresh whole leaf aloe. And I um, will, there was a lot more information in this study that would, if you'd like to really delve into it, I will certainly leave that link in there. So many of us don't grow, uh, don't live in a climate where you can just go out and pick some aloe. Um, I know in California you can, there's a lot of places where aloe is a plant that can be grown outside, but because of our winters, it would die down. So having it in a pot like this is the only way that um, I would be able to grow aloe and you do see it available in many areas and mostly it is the aloe vera plant. So uh, it does propagate well. I've had people say they've ripped off a leaf, stuck it in the, the um, <clears throat> medium and you would want to use cactus soil for it uh, that is a, a looser type of soil that it seems to grow better in. You do not want the plant to be, the roots to be wet. So watering it every two to three weeks, um, sometimes once a month, it depends on the humidity in your home uh, and the availability of sunlight. It is not good to put it in direct sunlight because it would burn the plant. So indirect sunlight, and it needs about four or five hours of indirect sunlight to grow properly. So, <clears throat> and because it can grow quite large, uh, you actually want to use a heavy pot, something like clay that can hold um, and not be tipped over by the weight of the top of the plant. So um, in, I will leave a link to the Farmer's Almanac where I got some of the information on growing it, how to water it, how to plant it, and uh, that link will be available for you in the description below. So although fresh leaf aloe is a wonderful way um, to use aloe, it's not always available to us if you're traveling or whatever. It is really nice to have a container of aloe vera gel handy for because you never know when an injury is going to happen and it is so wonderful and it's a great thing to add to a travel kit if you're vacationing in some place where it's going to be sunny and um you're thinking you're going to be out in that sunlight for just a very short time and you end up being 
out there longer than you anticipate and you end up with a burn. So I, in my travel kit, I always travel with lavender oil and um, some aloe vera gel to soothe any of that burn. Drinking the whole leaf aloe vera juice is a wonderful way to soothe uh, the digestive system. This uh, whole leaf is a concentrate and you would add just a small amount. There are some versions of aloe vera out there that claim that they have no taste. Well, there's very little uh, healing qualities to that particular thing. You can water down your own <laughs> aloe vera. You don't need to be paying for a gallon of water and a tablespoon of aloe vera plant juice. So uh, go ahead and um, get something that is going to last. You put it in the refrigerator and you have it available for the next time you do a smoothie and um, it can help. And it, it, it helps digestive concerns, liver detoxification, it soothes irritated tissue, and it's a good way to bump up nutrition. The biggest thing is making sure you are hydrated. And if you live in a hot, dry climate, this is an absolute must. You need to be um, making sure that your cells are hydrated. We all know that if you live in the desert climates, your issues with skin drying out is really a difficult one to keep that hydrated. Most people will put oils and creams, but that only goes so far, it stays on the surface. Whereas if you blend your cream with aloe vera gel and then apply it, you will be nurturing the skin that is in the process of growing and coming to the surface of the skin that you see. So, and these two products, I absolutely love. They're Nature Sunshine. And I'll have a link in the description below for a 25% off uh, your order. So that's a wonderful deal. So I hope that you share this video with your friends so that they can decide if it's right for them, if it's something that they would really enjoy uh, trying. Um, you can also pass the link on to them. Um, make sure that you hit the like button if this has been valuable in any way. Uh, give me a comment if you've used aloe in any kind of a solution or extract or have uh, healing benefits from it. I would love to hear from you. And if you have specific questions, please email me at Dr. Mary at bornforhealth.com and um, share these videos. I hope that this presentation has been of value to you. So get control of the health by focusing on herbs and healthy eating. Um, make the best of this summer and incorporate some of the uh, herbs that I've talked about all uh, season long. Be thankful for the people and gifts of nature, the flowers, and all the joy around you. I want to thank you for viewing today, and I hope that you go out and find some aloe and plant it, whether it's in your home or whether it's in um, outside, and use it. This is Dr. Mary for the health of it.